Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to part one of our storytelling trilogy. It's been said that when an elder dies, a library is lost. Today, Where the Road Rises advocates a revival of the elder's storytelling role. In part two, we will discuss the various tools available to tell your story and give you step-by-step -step instructions. And on our final show in the series, we will tell you some of the great senior stories we have collected. Seniors have for centuries been our memory keepers, recounting the past and the young learning from it. My childhood in rural Ireland was filled with stories of ghosts, illegal whiskey stills, fairy rings, banshees, brutal oppression, cruel clergy war, hunger and survival. Not only did the stories entertain, preserve ancestry and pass down information, the telling enhanced the elders' status within the community. As we moved away from the extended family, this role fell by the wayside and often with it went the elders' self-esteem and sense of purpose. A growing number of senior care providers are restoring the storytelling role for the benefit of our seniors and their caregivers and their families. Looking back on life provides an opportunity to create meaning and legacy in telling their unique story. Elders see their accomplishments and the value they contributed to the world. We're going to take a brief look today at three of the therapies available to reap the benefits of storytelling for our seniors. Life review, reminiscence and dignity therapy. Robert Butler, a doctor in the 60s, theorized that having an older adult think back on their life's events was therapeutic and he laid the foundation for life review therapy. It helps adults achieve perspective, peace and empowerment. The caregivers center their view around time periods such as childhood, parenthood, working years, becoming a grandparent, those sorts of things. It also includes milestones, major historical events and turning points in their lives. It can be enhanced with music, photos, letters, possessions, old newspaper clippings, even family trees. If your loved one has already been diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's, reminiscence therapy can target specific memory groups and improve their psychological well-being. Practitioners constantly strive to find ways to help the dying cope with the reality of their death. One therapy, a young therapist in the 1960s, noticed that an end-of-life treatment called dignity therapy could help the dying come to terms with their end of life, could reach to the strong need that they had for legacy that would transcend their death and extend their influence over time. In Dignity Therapy, the focus is not just on the content and the document produced, but on the process where the listener shows interest, empathy and sensitivity. Dignity Therapy is not designed to be historical or chronological, rather it shines a light on the events that shape the patient's life. Too often, in the midst of our focus on the tasks of caregiving, we forget to find time for meaningful conversation and dialogue. For caregivers, hearing a loved one's story may provide understanding and enlightenment. I'll give you a couple of examples. After a childhood of poverty and abuse, John vowed his own family would never experience hunger or lack. 
His shame, however, prevented him from sharing his childhood story. He worked long hours and looked forward to retirement to make up for lost time with family and friends. When advanced colon cancer shattered his retirement dreams, he was overcome with despair and regret. His daughter Bonnie, bitter and resentful, she had to take time from her own family to care for him when he had not been there for her. In telling his life story, John was able to express his love for Bonnie as well as his regrets and ask for forgiveness. Bonnie not only forgave him, she admired now his resilience and determination. And this deeper insight helped her see the strength and fortitude that he had passed on to her. Their remaining time together became an opportunity to love and share and gain deeper understanding between them. Another example is Betty and her daughter. Betty was a dedicated mother and cook, always with a warm meal on the table as Nancy was growing up. Nancy always intended to learn about her mother's passion for cooking, but her own busy life kept getting in the way. Taking the time to ask about favorite recipes as her mother became ill, gave way to learning more about family history and heritage. Nancy heard stories of joy and love and hardship she had never known before. After her mother's death, she began to incorporate these recipes into family and holiday meals, providing opportunity for remembrance and honoring her mother's memory. Dear viewers, I want you to tell your own story. I want you to inform, entertain, delight and inspire your family. I want you to feel grown and accomplished and rich beyond your earthly possessions. Then I want you to help your senior tell theirs. On our next show, we will explore the various tools and methods available to assist you in story gathering and storytelling, and I will guide you through the process. If, however, you want to get a head start, my own step-by-step -step storytelling program is available on wheretheroadrises.com. It's also on my website, Carolyn Walshlaw. Until next time, goodbye.